This morning we're going to cover how to search a file or just a line in general for a string. And so we're going to do the line first. Suppose that we have a string called the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. So this is our input object. We're going to search for the pattern the, which obviously is in there. And it's important to note that it actually will return the string if it finds the string that we're looking for. For instance, if I'm looking for them, you'll notice it doesn't return anything. If I'm looking for snakes, it won't return anything, right? But as long as I'm picking a word that's actually in the input object string, it will actually return it, okay? So that's how to search basically a string for a string. Let's suppose we want to search a file for a string. So it's very similar, except, uh, of having an, except instead of having an input object, we have a path. And so we're pointing to files, file text. And so let's suppose we want to look for the word file. And you'll notice it's going to return the line on which the string is in, right? So this text file has multiple lines, but we see that um, in line one, there is uh, the word file. This is a line in a file, right? Suppose you want to look for the word fox in the file. And we'll see that on line three, there's the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dogs. Okay. So that's basically how to, um, yeah, how to, to look for a line in a file. One of the things that I will uh, just note really fast, this is actually very useful when you're like mining text data, not necessarily with PowerShell, but anything. Um, it's, uh, let's just say for those of you, especially who watch videos to the end, um, so anytime we're in a stock bubble, you always know that we're in a stock bubble because of the questions that people ask. So people will start to ask things, and they did this, by the way, in uh, 2008 and uh, 1999. These are right before major recessions. So they'll ask questions like, hey guys, should I borrow 30% from my credit cards to invest in stocks since the S&P 500 is returning 40% a year? I'm not kidding. People are actually asking these type of questions. And so... Um, you kind of can sense that there's a stock bubble because people are starting to uh, get so excited about the returns on the market that they end up borrowing huge sums of money. And before housing, uh, the example that we were in a housing bubble was people were, uh, they were literally buying houses with no money down at all, expecting that the house is going to like quadruple in price in a year, which again, anybody who's even remotely smart at math would be like, wait, if median incomes aren't quadrupling in a year, <laughs> how is how is the price of a home going to be able to quadruple in a year and still be sustainable? Who's going to be buying that home? So anytime you want to see a bubble in something, what you do is pay attention to the behavior, the type of questions that people ask. And this is where like searching for a string or mining text, it's very key. And And to put that in perspective too as well, like people like banks and the Federal Reserve, they actually don't do this. So that's why they have no idea when there's bubbles. They're just looking at data. Well, data are great, but you can only go so far with numbers. Sometimes you have to actually look and see how irrationally exuberant people are behaving. So there's a benefit for those of you who are uh, are looking for material or actually watch videos to the end. But anyway, that's how you search a, a file for a string. Or you can search, like I said, you can look at just an input object. So if you pass an input object in, let's suppose you're trying to read something, just pass it into the input object and then of course pass it into the pattern.